Hello and welcome back to the quarry and this is the epilogue, the very final episode of this playthrough. Now I've got to warn you, the epilogue isn't great. It's actually quite short, it only lasts about four minutes and it's like a, a slideshow that shows you what happened to all your characters. So it's not exactly fleshed out, but it's certainly worth watching. And we also get to hear episodes for podcast. You know the podcast that was mentioned throughout the playthrough. And the reason I know this is because I've already watched it, so I'm re-recording it, but hopefully I'll be adding a bit more context to what's going on. A lot of the wrap-up of the story is done through the podcast, and it sort of talks you through the history of the camp and what happened. It's a little bit of a cop-out, I think. I was expecting some quite protracted cutscenes showing you what happened to everyone. But never mind, we've got what we've got. Yeah, the other thing I did was look online to see how many other endings there were, and there are loads of them! According to the game developers, there's about 186 significant differences in the game. So that's not 186 endings. I think there's about five or six sort of main endings. But there's loads and loads of variation within the game, which is good. But overall, I think the ending is a little bit of a letdown. I mean, in the last episode, the showdown with Silas was quite the anticlimax. I thought we were going to have some big fight with the white werewolf. And in the end, he's just lying there injured in his little nest. And we creep up behind him and shoot him in the back. And it's not terribly satisfying. Although, as I was saying, there's all sorts of variations. So, for example, if you don't shoot Silas, and this is a spoiler, so you might want to cut around this bit, but there is an ending where you can not shoot Silas, and then Laura has a fight with Travis, and Travis gets killed accidentally. Then Silas wakes up and kills Laura and Ryan. So all sorts of weirdness and bloodshed is entirely possible. But I do think my version of the game was a little bit buggy in places because there were times when I should have been given the choice and wasn't. Well, at least I think I should have been given a choice and wasn't. And there was lots of opportunities where I should have been able to shoot and again wasn't given the opportunity to do that. So anyway, let's continue with this. We'll have the slideshow and then we'll listen to the podcast. Yeah, I should warn you that the people hosting the podcast are a bit irritating. But it's quite interesting in that the people doing the podcast go through all the evidence we found during the game, which is good. Every little movement, Here we go, and this is the epilogue. So we'll find out what's happened to everyone. Emma Mount back deceased, yeah. That's poor Emma. Bobby Hackett deceased. Yeah, Bobby was mauled, but we don't care about Bobby, frankly. Chris Hackett. Oh, Ryan shot him with silver. I don't even remember that. Constant Hackett, she's dead. We don't really care about her either. Jebediah Hackett. Chucked to death by vengeful Laura. Nick. Damn, werewolf Nick was shot by Laura. Oh, I forgot about Nick. Kaylee. He was shot and killed by Laura. Yeah, Jacob's alive. Nice. Max Brinley deceased. Oh, hungry Caleb. Eight Max. Abigail, she made it. Caitlin, damn. Oh, she got killed by Caleb as well. Dylan's alive, hid in the classroom. Caleb is alive, okay. So once Silas was killed, he was cured. He's alive. I ended up quite liking Travis. Ryan. Yeah, he made it. Here's Laura, obviously alive. And here's Silas.
Summer camp tragedy. Freak bear attack leaves several dead. What do you make of that, Anton? I love that term, several. Like, the detectives are just, they, they don't even count the bodies. They're not like one, two, they're like one, two, three. Yeah, you know what? It's several. Several murders. You know, it might be a tactic, though. They can't give out that information yet. Sometimes detectives are notoriously difficult to solicit information from, especially when you go in saying, Hi, I'm a paranormal expert. I thought we'd done the whole Hackett's Quarry thing. Not this Hackett's Quarry thing. What was this, like three months ago? Old news, dude. Anton, introductions first. We are Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. I'm Grace. And I'm Anton. And together, we explore the possibility of supernatural involvement in real life, everyday occurrences. And that's exactly what they are, real life, everyday occurrences. With a shadow of spiritual, supernatural occurrences. No. <sighs> okay, so I hope you've got hat insurance, Anton, because I'm about to blow your mind. Did you just ask if I had hat insurance? Yes. It's responsible to ensure those things which mean the most to you. A hat. Yes. Okay, I know where your priorities lie. Go on. Anyway, there actually is a real reason that we're coming back to Hackett's Quarry. There have been some developments, and I've sourced some information. I remain skeptical, but I'm all ears. Under my hat. I was hoping you'd say that. Oh god, why? Why are you smiling? Stop it, I hate it. Why? I had braces. I have to make use of them sometimes. You do have very pretty teeth. Thank you. That's something that a lot of podcast listeners might not know about me. <clears throat> so, it just so happens I've got someone on the inside. So today's episode is going to have a bit of a show-and-tell vibe to it. Who do you know on the inside? The inside of where? What? You know someone on the inside? Don't we all have someone on the inside? You know, an inner critic that says, Stop doing a podcast. No one's listening. You should listen to that voice, Grace. Okay, well, what I really meant is, let's call it an anonymous donation. You know, we're not the only ones who flagged this as a bizarre situation. Someone actually reached out to us. They sent us a package. Did you? You didn't open it. Anyone who, I don't trust anyone who listens to this show. Oh, I couldn't wait to open it. Surprise! Anonymous donation. Okay, you've always promised me since day one of this podcast that if you could see true evidence, you will consider all options, right? Did you not say that? I did say that, yes. I mean, I know you Knowing for a fact that we would never see any evidence, I did say that. Okay, well, we've been sent information and we need to decide whether it's bizarre or bona fide. <sighs> okay, fine. Let's do this. For anyone listening at home, we are about to open a package from a mysterious person who listens to this show. If you are the one who sent us whatever it is, congrats, you got us. Sorry, the tape is just really, really, there's just so much tape on the package. Sorry, can you help me with this? Do you have like a key I could like slice at it with? No, I don't want you to dull my key. Just use your fingers. But just give me your fucking key, Anton. No. Give me your fucking key. No. Get your own key. Not like you lock your door. Of course I lock my door. What are you what are you hiding? What am I hiding? Do you not lock your doors? No, I have nothing to hide. You think that ghosts are real, but you don't lock your doors? No, ghosts couldn't open my doors. They could walk through my walls, Anton. Okay, you need to be more concerned with murderers. Take a look. Apparently they found another body. Whoa! You can't just show me a picture of a dead body. You gotta tell me before you're gonna do that. Okay, then let's take this over. Anton, can I show you a picture of a dead body? No! I can't work with that, Anton. Okay, fine, yes, you. It, it's a dead body. Okay, wh what is this? What am I looking at? It's one of the hikers that went missing. Do you remember that? Yes, that's the true part of the story. Yeah, Ed Benson was his name. He was drowned in the lake. Okay, drowned or was drowned? Now you're getting grammatical. I'm not getting grammatical. If you drown, you just went swimming and you drowned. If some, if he's been drowned, then someone drowned him. Well, then I think I implied precisely what I meant to imply. Now, of course, I can't verify this info. Of but course you can. What, do I have like a history of not verifying yes, the info? Yes, it's fake. Okay, but I feel very strongly that he was drowned. 
Hackett. Okay. Well, do the police know about this? Are the Hackett family suspects? Okay. Okay. I like that you are getting into this. Here's the thing. The newspaper says this guy's still missing, right? He looks pretty fucking found in this picture. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's not missing. He's right there. But yeah. why? Why would they say he's still missing? Because it is a conspiracy. A cover-up. Don't you see? They're all in on it. I, I, who is all in on it? The Hackett family? The Hackett family, the North Kill Gazette. I told you I've been suspicious of them from the start. Okay, uh, okay, so there's the one hiker, he's dead. What about the other one? Anne Radcliffe, still missing. Who knows how many bodies are still down there, though. <sighs> I don't know, this is pretty inconclusive. I, I'm sorry that the guy drowned, but this kind of seems like a big to-do over nothing. Or is it a big undo of something, which is what a cover-up is. Okay, you can't just twist my words like that. Well, if that's not enough for you, what about their backpacks? They were found at Hackett's Quarry. Whoa, wait, seriously? Y yeah, allegedly. Allegedly, there we go. Purportedly. Okay. Assumedly. Right, allegedly this, apparently that. Nothing's ever concrete, is it? These could be anyone's bags. Yeah, well, I choose to believe that these two particular hiking bags belong to our two missing hikers. This is irrefutable proof for me. Okay, well, that's... In you have insanely low standards. This is circumstantial evidence at best. Do I have low standards or do I just have a more flexible imagination? And that is how all the greatest discoveries are made. I think your brain is a little bit too flexible. I still think that that body photo is a fake. Not everyone uses all the filters you use. Excuse you. Just saying. So, we've got to talk a little more about the Hackett family. Right, so these guys are like the heritage landowners, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Their great-great-great-grandparents were trappers who claimed the land way back when. They just claimed it? Yes, they did. They put their flag on it just like the man on the moon. The Hackett family flag, right. Well, apparently when they claimed it, they found quartzite. Quartzite? Okay, I was hoping you would ask. Fun fact, every building in the whole of New York is made of quartzite. That's not fun or a fact. Most of them are, but I digest. Digress? It was a pun. They dug the quarry and hit great heights of success before Septimus Hackett, classic bad guy name, the seventh son of the trappers, the number seven, has great supernatural powers, uh -huh. closed the mine down. Okay, so then they only had the land to live off. Yes, you say only, but this land actually spans acres. That's a lot of forest, a lot of unexplored darkness. Ooh, okay, a great place to hide, to have all these dark secrets for this strange, reclusive family. Mm -hmm. And this is where we start to get a little more into paranormal territory. Okay, here acres we go. Acres and acres of haunted woods. If you say so. Welcome to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. Welcome back to Bizarre Yet Bonafide. Anton, today I'm actually going to pass you some light writing. Okay, you're going to make me read this? Mm-hmm. All right, um, this is... What you're seeing now is a copy of a letter that Kaylee Hackett wrote to her grandma, allegedly. <sighs> All right, uh, this seems like more of a you job, but I suppose right, I can Right, but read I, I this. feel like if some of the evidence comes from your mouth, it will have more clout. Right, okay, here we go. Gammy, how long we gonna drag this shit out? I know family is the most important thing, but I want to know what's outside the forest, outside this damn house and camp, and I sure as hell know that ain't about to happen because of who we are. Maybe we can explain what's going on. Fucking show people. Then they'll know we got no control over it. I know you just trying to protect us, but one day you won't be here no more, and right now it feels like we stuck in a dark hole. 
I can't sleep, Gammy. Or if I do, I dream about that fucking fire. We were just dumbass kids back then. I wish it never happened. Love, K, X, O, X, O. That took a turn. Yes. Dream about that fucking fire. Does that not read as the haunted scribblings of someone who saw something that they shouldn't have seen? Yeah, no, I'm fully creeped out. She was clearly going through some stuff. And this is legit? I mean, I don't know why someone would fake it. Then again, I can't verify any of this. So, you've got to suspend your disbelief slightly. Man, this poor girl. Yeah, there was something going on, something eating away at her. And that's what I want to explore. Okay, well, consider my disbelief suspended for now. So, I don't think that's going to be a problem for this next one. Oh god, why? Holy shit, this is a cease and desist letter. And it's addressed to us. Dude, why didn't you tell me about this? Well, it was never actually sent. That's mad shit, fam. What? Signed by Travis Hackett. We're not doing anything illegal. Aren't we? Think about it. I guess it wasn't technically sent to us. Cease and desist letters come from people hiding stuff. Hmm. Okay. And next we have this empty vial thing. Now to me, empty implies that it was once full. Samesies. Blood stains, maybe? Filled with blood? Looks that way. Freaky. Some kind of ritual thing? Do I detect a hint of belief? Love a good ritual. Kinda fucked up that these guys know who we are, though. Okay. Anton, what you see next pretty much confirms it. They are a crackpot conspiracy theorist a loser? Shit went down at Hackett's Quarry this summer. Real, super natch shit. See, you always say things like this, and you're always overselling it. You always have to oversell something to even sell it. That's capitalism, baby. All right. Okay, this is actual footage from one of the trail cams in Hackett Woods. Oh, cool, a camera in the middle of the woods? Did they find a squirrel? Be honest, if it was mounted on a mountain bike, you would watch that whole video. Yes, of course. Is there a mountain bike involved? No, but take a look anyways. Okay. That is a bear? That is a bear to you? There is no way that is a bear. Okay, well, it, uh, a skinny bear? Okay, this could be some of the clearest footage of something like this I've ever seen. Right, it's kind of blurry though. Blurry and convincing. Sometimes the truth can't be contained within the lines. Right, yeah. And also, footage is pretty easy to fake. Technology is super scary. Yeah, but what the hell were the Hackett's doing with footage like this anyways? Huh, well, that's a good point. Weird little video of a skinny bear. Yeah, I don't know. Again, you keep saying a skinny bear. Have you seen a skinny bear? Yes, that's Bears very sad. Oh. They have polar bears. It's hard for them to find food sometimes. Don't feel too bad for them, though. They're nasty. Okay, but putting the Hackett family aside for a moment, there's more to this. Are you ready for some real spooky shit? I'm ready for real spooky shit. I don't know if you can provide it, but please try. <sighs> don't get too freaked out. I'll try my hardest. Okay, do you want to hold my hand? No. Okay, do you need someone to comfortingly pat your back? Please just say what you're going to say. Do you want me to turn all the lights on so you don't- I don't want you scared? to do anything. I want you to say what you have. Okay, so what's this? What are we looking at now? A photo by one of the counselors, Emma Mountebank, downloaded from her phone. My god, is this real? Well, <laughs> that is what we're here to discuss. Okay, this looks shocked. I mean, doesn't it? Okay, but w if you downloaded photos from my phone, yes, they would all be shopped as well. There would be a filter on it to make my eyes look big and cheeks look pink. But I don't even think that has even any of those filters. Look at the eyes and tell me that's not real danger. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, weird, bizarre, yet bona fide. What the hell happened? More than we are being told. Yeah? There's something else, too. Okay. <sighs> Look at what happens when I put it through a negative filter. Whoa! Okay, what is that? It's her! The hag of Hackett's quarry! See? Full circle! God! Uh, no, 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 no. That could be anything. Like what? 
please try to explain. I, I don't what know that. what's that thing. There's this thing that makes your mind. You see faces and stuff. There's people. There, there's Jesus shows up on toast every once in a while. This could be whatever. Well, I don't need to hear too much more about your breakfast. But I can't believe that you're still questioning this. You're doubting your own cynicism now, though. I can tell. I can smell the doubt that you usually apply to other things on yourself. Picks or didn't happen, right? Well, picks so did happen. No, picks you can fabricate. Experiences you can't. I need to... I, I would need to see the Hag of Hackett's Quarry myself. Well, if you want to go to North Kill with me... No! I actually have a really I don't. good okay. relationship. I believe you. Okay. But you know what? I have something that couldn't be fabricated. Claw marks in a wall. I I could make this right now. Really? Just f find me a wall, I'll take a fork and just go to town. Wow. What an artisan. Thanks. Well, to me, this isn't actually overtly supernatural because it could have just been, you know, an animal or someone's angry parrot. But it'd be unfair not to discuss. Why? Because the audience has come to expect a certain length of the podcast, so we actually have to sometimes do a little bit of filler. Yeah, that's true. We don't have much to talk about. Well, whoever did reach out thought it was worth sharing. There's a chance this is all just a prank, you know? It was just a prank, Anton! Who even are you? It's probably just some teenager who's making fun of you. It's probably that dude who came on and gave us a one-star review. I would love to tell you that that's implausible, but a teenager making fun of me is probably the most familiar experience of my life. Moving on! How about this? Tell me this isn't freaky as shit. Oh! Is that skin? Skin, fur, whatever you want to call it, really. Okay, it looks human. Is that a tattoo? I don't think so. Or maybe a really bad one. Wait. Is it? Apparently, this belongs to whatever creature supposedly caused all this. Okay, do we have the actual thing? Did they capture it? Can I can I see it in the uh, in its weird flesh, so to speak? You want to touch the flesh. I want to touch the flesh. Well, fortunately, the person who sent this to me was smart enough to know that it would be dangerous to steal the actual evidence, not to mention they might suspect that you, Anton, would hide it away so as to sabotage this legitimate investigation. Right, I am known for destroying evidence. Convenient that we can't see the real deal, huh? Come on, man, you're desperate not to believe. If there's reasonable doubt, you have to assume it's not real, Occam's razor. But look at everything we've seen. Put it all together, objectively. Okay. You know what? It's weird. I'll give you that. Oh my god. I just said it was weird. Don't make a big deal out of it. Oh my god, I've done it. You haven't done anything. I said it was weird. I've done it. I've turned you. You're, I've converted you to my side. You're a believer now, right? I will never be on your side. I won. I won. You did not win. This I mean, is look, a contest and I have prevailed. You have not. Look, I just mean I can see it. The lack of details in the news report and this stuff. Uh, I don't know. Whatever it means, there's merit to the idea that something strange went down. Strange. Interesting word choice. So, what are you saying? Shut up. Come on. No. Give me what I I'm want. I'm not giving here. you anything. You've practically given it. Just give me the succinct soundbite I so desperately long for. Okay, I never agreed to this title, but I would agree that for the first time ever, this case could well be bizarre yet bona fide. Ah! This is the best day of my life. And that's sad. Why? Is it not yours? No! So what now? Well, we gotta send this stuff to the police. They can decide whether it's useful or not. I just wish we could know more. I wish we could just look into a crystal ball and see how it all played out. Yeah, but what fun would that be? Sure, we could speculate, but we weren't there. We didn't go through what these kids went through. There's no way we'll ever really know what truly went down at Hackett's Quarry. Um... Who the fuck even are you? I'm being genuine. That was beautiful. Thank you. You just launched into precisely the kind of content I've been trying to make. It's just the first time we've had a coherent thought on this podcast. That's it, the fat shamed lady has sung. There ain't no more. Well, yeah, it, it went on a little bit, didn't it? The, um, the podcast. But interesting, nonetheless. 
Anyhow, I hope you found that entertaining. Hope to see you for the next playthrough, and until I do see you again, I shall say goodnight. Okay then, cheerio.